Hi, I'm Jennifer Waters, the director of the Nikon Imaging Center at Harvard Medical School, a light microscopy core facility, and this presentation is on preventing microscope objective lens damage. Objective lenses are commonly damaged during routine use. If you ask anybody who works in a microscopy core facility, they will be able to tell you at least one story, uh, usually many stories, of objective lenses that were inadvertently damaged while someone was using the microscope for just routine use. The images that I'm going to show you in this presentation of damaged objective lenses were unfortunately damaged in my core facility. The good news is that damage can be easily avoided if you understand how it can happen. A few years ago, I began requiring that all of the research scientists who want to use the microscopes in my core facility take training um, on how objective lenses are damaged, the type of information I'm going to give you today. And um, the number of objective lenses that are damaged in my core has dropped substantially since I um, started that requirement. I'm going to begin by reviewing the parts of the microscope that I will refer to throughout this video. These are pictures of an upright and an inverted microscope from my core. And the objective lenses are the lenses that we're going to talk about protecting. Objective lenses are mounted onto the nose piece on the microscope, and the nose piece is what you rotate when you are changing between objective lenses. The sample sits on the stage of the microscope. The objective lens is the main image forming lens in the microscope. It's an expensive part. They can be $10,000 or more. If an uh, objective lens is damaged, it can sometimes be repaired. The repairs are costly, they can be thousands of dollars, and you need to usually ship the lens to the manufacturer, often in a different country, and it takes a while for the repair to be done, and then it has to be shipped back from, to you. Um, so the lens can be away from your lab for many months being repaired. The most commonly damaged part of an objective lens is the exposed top lens. The top lens has many coatings of anti-reflective materials, which make it particularly delicate and susceptible to scratches. The type of damage I'm going to talk about today are cracks and scratches in the top lens of the objective that can occur while you're using the microscope. So this is a dissecting microscope image of a top lens, and what you're looking at is the interface here, this arc, is the interface between the metal surface that surrounds the top lens and the lens itself. And you can see two scratches, a large scratch here and a smaller scratch, and then a crack in the lens. And again, today I'm going to focus on this type of damage happening while you're using the microscope. You can also damage objective lenses in different ways, like when you're cleaning them, but today I'm going to talk about this type of damage occurring while you're operating the microscope. Throughout this video, I'm going to use this cartoon to demonstrate how the different types of damage can occur. What you're looking at is the microscope stage. The microscope stages are usually metal, and they have a ledge that your sample sits on. I'm also showing the nose piece and several objective lenses. When you focus the lens onto your specimen, the lens is usually up higher than the ledge that the sample is sitting on. So one of the ways you can damage an objective lens is by moving the stage such that it comes into contact with the lens. So to prevent this sort of damage, first you want to begin by focusing as close to center of the specimen as you can, and then as you're moving the stage around, stop every now and again and look at the microscope and just look where the lens is relative to the stage, and don't let it get too close. If you look and it's too close to the stage, move in the opposite direction. After a while, you'll get used to how much you can move before you have to check and make, to sh make sure that the objective is not too close to the stage. This is a lens that was damaged when a stage hit the lens. 
you can see that there is a crack in the top lens on the side of impact and another crack on this side as well. Objectives can also be damaged when rotating the nose piece to put a new objective into place. The objective lenses may hit the stage as the nose piece rotates. So to prevent this type of damage from occurring, you want to move the objective lens away from the stage before you rotate the nose piece. So on some motorized um, microscopes, this can be automated such that when you select a new objective lens in the software or push a button on the microscope, the motorized focus will move the objective lens away from the stage, rotate in the new objective lens, and then move the focus back up to the previous position. So if you have a motorized microscope and it doesn't already do this, you can ask your microscope representative to set up that function for you. We found an objective lens that was very scratched up on one of our microscopes. And when investigating how it might have happened, I looked at the bottom of the stage and found that there were scratches, you can see them here, that follow the path that the objective lens rotates when you are moving the nose piece. So one of our microscope users was rotating the nose piece without moving the objective lenses away from the stage and scratching the lenses across that metal surface. Objective lenses can also be damaged if when you are focusing on the sample, the objective lens pushes on the slider cover slip and causes the slider cover slip to break. This is an image, um, again, taken with a dissecting microscope of an objective top lens after a user broke a cover slip while focusing the microscope. And um, you can see that there is a shard of glass that is in the immersion oil. So it's very important if you do break a slider cover slip that you are very careful when you clean the objective lens. Um, we could not see this piece of glass by eye. We were only able to see it when we looked under the dissecting microscope. So there are references in the notes section below this video um, on how to clean objective lenses carefully. Your best recourse here is to prevent breaking the slider cover slip while you're working on the microscope. This usually happens because as you're bringing the lens and the specimen closer together looking for that focal plane, you miss the focal plane and you just keep going in the same direction, continuing to look for it. And as the um, lens approaches the specimen, it eventually touches it and eventually puts pressure on it causing the cover slip or even slide to break. So what you wanna do when you're focusing is when you're looking at the image through the eyepiece or on the monitor, only move away from the specimen. So the way to achieve that is to first look at the specimen on the stage bring the objective lens close to the specimen. Now, how close it needs to be depends on the lens that you're working on. So a dry lens, it might be quite far away, a, a millimeter or so. With a oil immersion lens, it is more common for that lens to need to be very close to the specimen to be in focus. So once you're in focus, check that distance and keep that in mind for next time. But this first time that you're learning this type of focusing, what you wanna do is bring the objective lens very close to the specimen. Don't push on the specimen, but just bring it very close. And then look through the microscope eyepieces or at the image on the monitor and bring the objective lens away from the specimen, looking for the focal plane. Um, if you don't find it, then it might be that there's nothing in that field of view, so move the stage to another field of view if you think that might be the case. Um, and then try again, move a little bit closer this time to the specimen and move away again, looking for the focal plane. With a little bit of practice, um, you will get to the point where you know roughly how close you need to get to that specimen um, with your lens in order to be able to find the focal plane in this manner. And um, I think you'll find that it's, it's a much safer technique for, for focusing and will prevent you from breaking slides or cover slips. 
Another way that an objective lens might be damaged is if you're working on an inverted microscope and your specimen holder is such that your specimen sits higher on the stage than is typical. This is usually a problem more with custom um, chambers than it would be with standard slides or dishes. The problem here um, comes if when you are focusing on your sample, the stage hits one of the neighboring objective lenses. And so to prevent this from occurring, you want to carefully check to make sure that the lens and stage aren't coming into contact when you're focusing on your sample. And a way to do that, if it's not obvious just by looking, is to put a piece of lens paper in between the lens and the stage, and then slowly move the lens towards your sample um, while kind of wiggling the piece of lens paper. This is sometimes a two-person job. Um, and when the lens comes into contact with the stage, you'll feel the, um, the resistance pulling on the piece of lens paper. So if it turns out that the neighboring lenses do hit the stage before you can focus on your sample, then you're going to need to get this ch the sample closer, redesign the chamber so that you can get closer to the stage, or you can remove the neighboring objectives from the microscope each time that you are imaging with that chamber. Objective lenses can also be damaged if they come into contact with the edge of a cover slip. So for example, if you have a slide with two cover slips mounted, it's impossible to mount those at exactly the same height. And so if you're focused on one cover slip and you wanna to move to the second cover slip and that sec second cover slip is a bit lower, you can scratch the lens with the edge of that cover slip. And uh, this could be made worse if you have some sort of sealant on the edges of your cover slip, like hard nail polish, for example. So the way to prevent this is when you're moving from one cover slip to the next is to move the objective lens away from the specimen, move over, and then move back up. I hope this has been helpful. Take care of your objective lenses.